So, someone wise once said, if all else fails, follow direction. Now, why is it important to follow direction? Okay, to look. find your way. There you go. To know what to do. There you go. So, yeah, that's good, that's good. So an example is when we go to Disney World. And if you've ever been to Disney World, you'll know that it's pretty crowded there a lot. If you don't have a plan, you'll be sitting in, you'll be sitting in line with it. So that's why you have to come with a plan so you can make the best out of your day. God has given us directions for living this life in, in his word. In order to follow these directions, we need to know what they are. We can learn so much more through our own personal study. One must read and then spend time thinking about what God is trying to say to us and how we can apply it to our lives. So I have four points, and the first one is God's, God's word is, a, is an important defense against evil and self-doctrine. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn to Matthew 4, verse 4. In this first scripture, it's talking about when Jesus was in the wilderness being tempted by the devil and what his reaction was to each temptation. He answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth. And then skipping to verse 7, It is written again, You shall not tempt the, the Lord your God. And then in verse 10, Oh wait, last one is verse 7. And this one's 10. Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him, and in him you, you shall serve. So we can see here that Jesus' main weapon by each temptation against the devil was God's word. Okay. If you have, uh, okay, the second point is the word of God is the main weapon we have in the spiritual armor also. So if you, can turn, if you have your Bibles also, you can turn to Ephesians 6, Ephesians 6, verse 13 through 18. Ephesians 6, verse 13 through 18. I think I gave that to someone. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able God lists all these weapons in these verses here. And in verse 17, he says, And the sword of spirit, which is the word of God. So he's saying that one of the, one of, one of the weapons that we have is the word of God. Okay. And then if you can turn over to Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 through 14. Hebrews 5, verse 12 through 14. And this shows that regular study and use of God's word helps us to discern both good and evil. Okay. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So in verse 12, the word oracles, the definition is scriptures or sayings. So it would be pretty silly for a fifth grader to only drink milk because he'd, um, he'd already progressed in life. In the same way, someone, someone who's a Christian needs to continue study of God's word. It'd be foolish if he, only, if he didn't. Okay, and then in verse 14, the word use, I have a footnote and of use, and it means practice, unless you have a different translation. And then the word discern at the end means recognize. So what it's what basically what it's saying is here is that if you if you put the word of God to practice, you will recognize both good and evil. And in football, okay, if you watch it a lot, so you practice based kind of practice watching football, you'll be able to recognize what is what is and what isn't a flag. 
So like, but if you don't, you'll be like, oh, that's not a flag, you just touched him. But you know, if you, if, but if you watch it for a long time, you'll be like, oh yeah, you know, the NFL's rigged like that. But that's a different conversation. <laughs> so, okay, and then my second point is, we must spend time in God's word in order to help others. So in Colossians 3, verse 16, Colossians 3, verse 16. Okay. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. So when, in the beginning, it says, let the word of Christ dwell in you. So what's saying is let it into your heart and stay there for good. <clears throat> and also, also what's saying here is one of the ways we can teach, one of the ways to teach is we can encourage each other and study so we can know what God wants us to do. Okay. And then if you turn over to Romans 10, Romans 10, verse 14 through 17. Romans 10, 14 through 17. <clears throat> how then shall they call on him to whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him who they have not heard and shall not hear without a preacher and how shall they preach unless they are sent as it is written how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace who bring glad tidings of good things but they have not all obeyed the gospel for Isaiah says Lord, who has believed our report. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay. Thank you, Grace. And this shows that we share our faith through the truth of God's word. So say I get nine four-year-olds and take them to a baseball field and tell them to play baseball. Unless I've taught them, they won't know what to do. The point is, is that no one's going to know about Jesus if we don't tell them. And we won't know him that well either if we don't study. And then my third point is the book of Psalm 119. Psalm 119. <clears throat> okay, some statistics about Psalm 119. Your word is mentioned 38 times. Your law is 25 times. Your judgments, commandments, or testimonies are mentioned 22 times. And your precepts are mentioned 20, 20 times. That shows that Psalm 119 is a good book to read about if you're wondering about if you need to get into studying God's Word. So in chapter 2, I mean not chapter 2, verse 2, it says, Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with a whole heart. <clears throat> Keeping his testimonies, meaning obeying his word and putting them into practice and coming, coming to God with a full heart, not partially, not lukewarm, but full heart. And then now I have three scriptures from Psalm 119 that show that God's word is true and can be depended on. So verse 30, I have chosen the way of truth. Your judgments I have laid before me. Verse 142, your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and your law is truth. And then verse 151, you are near, O Lord, and your commandments are true, and all your commandments are true. So these 